This evening I'm here to talk about Dill's legendary photographer, Basil Kidd. There will be exciting developments with the Basil Kidd collection of photographs in the future, but in the meantime I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the man and his pictures. So there can't be many people in Deal who lived through, it was in Deal between the 1950s and the 1990s who don't remember being photographed by Basil. As a child of the 1970s, I remember Basil being a statutory part of every public occasion in the town. And there I am. <laughs> so, here I am, and what I actually remember is a lovely, jolly man in a tweed jacket and a corduroy cap who knew my dad. He used to blow raspberries at us as children to make us laugh as he took our pictures. And it was so exciting to get to Thursday and to know that the East Kent Mercury was out on sale and that your picture might be in it. Pages and pages of local pictures, nearly all with the byline, Basil Kidd Pick. Hundreds and hundreds of local weddings, including my own mum and dad's and my brother's wedding. Summer fates, our carnival. We a tug of wars, brownies, guides and scout events. And of course, the famous Royal Marines, Pantos. And I just think they're gorgeous, aren't they? It's just... Whatever it was, Basil was always there to capture it forever. And it has been said that if Basil wasn't there, then the event hadn't happened. In the town, he was known for his knack of being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> and what I particularly love about this picture is that the ladies there, none of them are actually looking at the streaker. One of them's looking at the photographer and the others are just chatting amongst themselves and laughing. <laughs> But leaving aside the photography for a short while, I'll tell you a little bit of the, Basil's early life. There we have Basil. He was born in Water Street in Dill on the 11th of March 1923. And um, he went to the Wesleyan School in Union Road and he joined what was then the Royal Navy School of Music in 1937. He was only 14, but that was quite normal back then. And he joined to learn the oboe, but Basil didn't get much practice as war broke out shortly afterwards. And two years after joining the Marines, Basil was on a gun turret as a rangefinder aboard a Royal Navy cruiser, HMS London, on the Arctic convoys. The following two and a half years were spent on the Devonshire, Norfolk, London and Kent. I found these pictures just to bring it to life a little bit. These cruisers were used for the deadly run to Russia with much needed supplies. The temperature was often well below freezing and the ships were under constant attack. It's almost unbelievable to actually think what it was like out there really. Especially, like I said before, not knowing how it was going to end for us. Um, when we speak about it, obviously it's with hindsight. But Basil liked to tell the story of being part of the crew of HMS Kent. When they, presented with, they were presented with a live reindeer. Um, by the Grateful Russians, but the reindeer apparently survived the journey home and was given to Glasgow Zoo. So Basil was aboard the HMS Norfolk, very close to HMS Hood, when she was sunk by the Bismarck, with the loss of all but three of her crew. In turn, HMS Norfolk helped sink both the Bismarck and the Scharnhorst. In 1942, his ship was in the infamous PQ-17 convoy, where the convoy was attacked by the German aircraft and by U-boats. Of the 35 ships, only 11 reached their destination, with a massive loss of cargo and lives. And in the 1990s, Basil was awarded the Russian Convoy Medal by no less than the Russian Premier, Mikhail Gorbachev. This is the Vanguard, and after the war, Basil was already becoming known as a photographer. And while serving on his last ship, the Vanguard, he took the official photographs for the Spithead Review. He then went on to serve with the Central Mediterranean Band, based in Malta, and after leaving the Marines in 1953, he was the photographic manager on the cruise liner New York before returning to Deal and starting his now famous freelance photographic business. <coughs> from then, Basil was the only press photographer for the East Kent Mercury, and that was for many years. And he was the official photographer for the Royal Marines Band Service, and also for the commandos, and he travelled to Belfast and Cyprus with a 4-1 commando. And I think this is a brilliant picture of Basil in Belfast. I just think it evokes all, all of 
you know, what, what it was like back then. But closer to home, and it wasn't only Carnival Queens and business openings that were in front of the now famous lens, from retiring ferry captains to the Queen Mother. Smiling for Basil there. Basil's got lots and lots of pictures of the Queen Mother. I think he rather liked her. And here's a letter actually thanking Basil from the Queen Mother. She had asked for that to be sent because when she was installed as the uh, Lord Warden, she liked the photograph so much that she got somebody to write and say to Basil to thank them, that she was very pleased with them. So I think that's a lovely thing to have. And then surprisingly, Michael Jackson. <laughs> I still can't really get my head around this one because Michael Jackson on a ferry going to Calais, <laughs> having his photo taken by Basil Kidd. Now that's sort of like the sort of thing you wake up in the middle of the night and say, well, that was weird. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a picture and it really did happen. So, um, yeah, still, anyway, but yeah, very well. And um, of course, Norman Wisdom, our local celebrity. And obviously the Weatherspoons, Norman Wisdom, uh, was at one point, people was asking for it to be called the Basil Kid. It still would have been my favourite if it hadn't been, but mm. Norman was him. And I know Norman invited Basil out to his home in Spain. There's quite a few photographs of um, his home in Spain with him out there. And lots of pictures at his um, niece's wedding, I think, and things. Just lovely pictures. And another local celebrity, Susan Hampshire, beautiful lady. She lived in Sandwich at the time. And um, Basil's got a lot of pictures of her. And... Gloria Honeyford on board one of the ferries as well. Very young Gloria Honeyford then. So these people have all been on the receiving end of Basil's raspberry. I spoke to somebody yesterday and the first thing she said to me was, oh, yeah, he used to come and he always used to blow a raspberry to make us laugh. And it's just brilliant. But um, he was never one just to say, say cheese like we do, and he, I've seen him do it. He'd often point and say to somebody, that you're undone, like that, and of course they'd be ah, like that, and everybody would start laughing just as he captured the photograph. And this, I think this picture is a great example of what it was like to be in the same room as Baz, because he, he just, he was hilarious, and I, I loved being around him. This was the lady that I've been given this picture by um, Campbell's, the owner of Campbell's, and this is when Basil was buying a car and she was just doing the paperwork and he had her in stitches, obviously. But um, somebody else said to me today, you must mention the Jewish Chronicle, and I was going to anyway, but one of um, Basil's other famous quotes was he was there for the Jewish Chronicle and he just wanted a quick one. And he always used to say that. <laughs> and on his retirement, the East Kent Mercury published a special edition. They used to do that um, if anybody retired or had a special birthday. They'd do a special front page and they did that for Basil, and they actually got permission from the Jewish Chronicle to use their masthead. So that would have been lovely. On a more sadder note, um, in September 1989, it brought the tragedy of the bombing at the Royal Marine School of Music here in Deal. And 11 innocent musicians lost their lives. This is Basil's picture. He's got um, quite a few um, of, of them walking around with the flowers. And our devastated town was visited by the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and Prince Philip, amongst other people. In the aftermath of this tragic event, Basil, along with many ex war Marine bandsmen, including my own dad, dusted off their musical instruments and formed the All Stars Band. Every year, this group of ex-musicians would come together, some travelling from other countries, to play great music together. And I was always amazed because they would turn up in the morning and they would rehearse, somebody would give them sandwiches and then they would play just fantastic music all evening and they hadn't seen each other for a year or on the first one they hadn't seen each other for years and it was fantastic. And here's Basil playing the oboe. They went on to raise thousands of pounds for the course and the bandstand was purchased with some of this money. And at the yearly visit and the rededication ceremony, the, uh, the Royal Marines Portsmouth Band, obviously, as we know, comes, comes here once a year in July. And Basil was always a familiar figure at the Warmer Green, and he wouldn't have missed it for the world. And there's 
That's the All Stars Band. Slightly out of sync here, but that's the All Stars Band. And then Basil, bless him, at the bandstand. In 1990, I myself joined these Kept Mercury, and Basil became my friend. And I remember him coming into the office most days, always jolly and ready to share a story or three. And I used to encourage it because I love listening to his stories. And after his retirement in his later years, I would pop up to see him at home and I would smile at the familiar figure through the window, sitting in his armchair watching TV. And as we chatted, I knew that there are boxes and boxes full of photographic gems in the next room. And I would often say to him, Baz, please, can I sort your photos out? And he'd say, oh, one day. Yeah, just one day. But obviously it, it didn't happen. And Basil passed away on the 27th of October, 2008, leaving two sons, a daughter and their families. I found my chance to help him sort his collection had gone forever. But speaking now, 11 years later, the Basil Kidd photograph collection has been gifted to the Deal Maritime and Local History Museum. A series of events have followed, and I'm delighted to be archiving and cataloguing his pictures. So, Baz, my one day has arrived, and I'm really honoured. And as I work with and get to know the collection, I will gradually bring them to you here, together with stories that lie behind them. And our aim at the museum is to get the collection ready for public viewing in some form, and to use them to raise money to archive those ones and also there's 10,000 negatives in a freezer and we would love to get those developed and digitalised. So they need to be preserved for generations to come as this collection forms such an important part of the history of Deal and I feel it must be, well everybody feels it must be preserved. So the, this ends my talk on Basil Kidd. The man who captured a town's history in photographs. The great joker, the phantom raspberry blower of old Deal Town, and a man who I'm proud to say was my mate Baz. So thank you for listening. <laughs>